world, up from the grave, he rose with all power, heaven and earth in his hands. I remember those songs we used to sing on Easter morning. Boy, it's amazing that God is worthy to be praised. I don't know what you got going on in your house, but one thing you need to know that this is the day that the Lord has made, and y'all let us rejoice and be glad in it. David said, I was glad, not sad, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for this is the day <laughs> that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to get my praise on when I think about how I was lost in sin, seeking to rise no more. But the master heard my cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Get out of those beds. Get on your feet, because the blood still works. Come on now. We're here to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I want you just to bob your head with me just like this. The blood, the blood still works. Yeah. 
my God. Woo! The blood still works. Thanks be to God. Aren't you excited about today? You know, every day we ought to be excited just like we are now because every day is a day of thanksgiving. And when we think about what our Savior has done for us, he came and surrendered his life that we might have life. He who knew no sin took on the sins of the entire world, laid it upon himself, nailed it to Calvary's cross. The Bible says that he died. The resurrection morning declares that he lives. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. And no matter what we are going through and what we would have to endure in life, never, ever, ever, never forget that fact that were it not for the love of our God and the sacrifice of our Savior, we would be lost eternally. But because he lives, <laughs> we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. Because we know that the future is not bleak. The future is bright. Why? Because he lives. I want to invite you to a passage of scripture that if you're not careful, you would breed a contentment. But I want you to read it with new zeal and zest. God's word is always alive and it's always carrying out and accomplishing what God has allowed it and sent it to accomplish. In the gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter, verses one through nine, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Get a copy of the Bible and, and follow me as I read. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout behold two men stood by them in shining garments and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful man and be crucified and the third day rise again and they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest nine verses of the said chapter God has already blessed us he's already blessed the reading he's already blessed us now let's bless him would you close your eyes and let's go before the throne of grace. Let's talk to God for he wants to hear from us. And listen to him what he has to say, not only today, but every day. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this resurrection morning. We thank you, God, for the experience that you allow us to have knowing, Lord, that our sins are crimson. But, Lord, you have taken our sins and nailed them to Calvary's cross in the personage of your Son, Jesus Christ. He who knew no sin took on the sins of the world. He bled. He died. 
he arose the third day morning. And Father, we thank you. We love you because you're teaching us how to love you. You loved us first and you love us to the fullness. You loved us so much that you look past our faults and not just certain groups of people, not certain tribes of folks, but all you came into the world for all men, women, children. And Father, we are among those. We have sinned and we have come short of your glory. We've faltered in so many ways. Lord, we left things undone and we've said things we shouldn't have uttered. But Lord, we come this morning, this resurrection morning, this great getting up morning, we come this morning to bow down before you, to lift up our hands in worship, to magnify and glorify your holy name. Thank you, Lord, that you are not somewhere hovering around. You are always involved with the affairs of man. We thank you, Lord, this morning for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for our lying down last night and early rising this morning. We thank you, God, that you didn't let the deaf angel do anything to us. In fact, you made him behave. And for that reason, Lord, we hallelujah your name. We thank you now, Lord, that you give us a reason to come before you. For, Lord, we have nowhere else to go. You are the rock of our salvation. You're the finisher of our faith. You are a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Bridges you put over troubled waters. You are our king. Lord, as we live in a world that is deprived, depraved, and almost demonic, we do know that hope is in you, Lord. That morning that you touched your son and raised him from that grave gives us hope today. Hope in your love. Hope in your finished work. Hope in your power. And as we rest upon your strength, we realize, God, that you are so awesome, so wonderful. Have mercy upon our world, Lord. It is rocking and reeling. It's all over the place. But, Lord, there's still hope. We're not pessimistic people. We're optimistic people, Lord, for we know that if anyone would call on your name, that, Lord, you would ask. So, Lord, we take these prayers and we offer these petitions on behalf of our brothers and sisters, those that we know, those that we don't know. And we pray a special blessing now upon Cherise, our member, we ask God that as she approached this place of operation on Tuesday, God, that you would order her steps. Those that would be in an operating room, God, that they would be always under your care. And Father, we won't wait until Tuesday come and go. We'll give your name to praise for we love you and we honor you. We magnify your name for you are our king. You are our God. And what a mighty God we serve in the matchless, most perfect and profound, powerful name of Jesus, the Christ, we pray. Shout amen. Come on, shout amen again. Say it one more time. Amen. Listen, it's resurrection morning. And our cultural arts, those are our children. They, they got some renditions and we gonna just we just going to sit back and clap our hands and egg them on and watch them in a new way. We've never done it this way before. We are virtual, but you know what? We are all in the spirit. And let's, let's greet them with a hand clap, amen, and let's listen to what God will say through them. Out of the mouths of babes, oh, my God, listen to him. He's alive, he's alive, praise God today. He's alive, he's alive, the stars be rolled away. Presenting Elliot Hayford. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did, you rose, 
and save this little kid. Caleb Jones, hooray, hooray. Hooray, hooray, it's Easter day and it's time for our Easter play. While we celebrate, Jesus arose on Easter, that's why we celebrate. He came from heaven to earth to spread love, not hate. Happy Easter! Jesus is here. Do you are here on happy day? Teach you are on Easter day. Presenting Dominic Hayford. It is beautiful out. Don't fret, don't help. Let's celebrate. Our Jesus is great. It's Easter time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's Easter time. Let's celebrate God's love. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's Easter now. Jesus came from above. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's Easter time. Christ rose from the dead. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's Easter now. By him we are all led. The title of our speech is, He is Risen. I'm Julie. I'm JJ. Christ is risen, there's nothing to fear. The angel proclaimed for disciples to hear. He got what he promised. He conquered the grave. The sun name from heaven, his mission to save. His mercy is endless, soft eyes full of love. His blood made us holy, as white as a dove. So lift up our voices, our Father be praised. Proclaim of His glory, our Jesus is raised. He has risen by Libby Mary Kasai. I love Jesus. I love to call His sweet name. I love Jesus. Every day He is the same. I love Jesus. My Lord is never far away. I love Jesus. He arose one Easter day. Jesus carried the cross. Jesus carried the cross. He carried my Savior. He is my Savior. He is my friend. He is God's Son. And I love Him so. On this Easter day, I want you to know. Hello, everyone. The name of my speech is Easter. E is for everything Jesus means to me. A is for always a friend he will be. S is for he's a special person in my life. T is for he takes away the heartache and strife. E is for Jesus' endless love he shows in every way. R is for remembering Jesus arose on Easter day. Happy Easter! Welcome to Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We're glad you came to celebrate Easter Day with us. Today you will learn Jesus' fate, listen up you must. We saw our Savior on the cross, misery and pain, but he was dying for the lost precious souls to gain. On the third day he rose again, conquering death and sin. His blood cleansed the heart of men and makes us pure within. Give your life to Jesus today. He will fill your heart with perfect peace in every way. He's the missing part. Amen. What a blessing. Fresh and beautiful. Good, new. It's amazing. God is making us step out of our comfort zone and be more and more creative. He's that way. And our cultural arts ministry, high five to the parents, high five to our persons who are in charge over the cultural arts team. It's amazing that God is blessing us in spite of. And one thing I need to say this, that thank God for our people of our church. Y'all always rise to the occasion. And I know one of the reasons are is because he lives. Amen. 
Hey, the music ministry, we got a little crowded uh, people. We got the young folks and the uh, older, mature people singing together. Man, it's getting all, all excited I am for that time when we get ready to come back uh, at some point, uh, maybe this year, hopefully. Uh, but it's amazing that now they're going to come together and such a powerful song called Don't Cry. Let's worship with them today. <laughs>
the Lord. He's not dead. So I don't cry. Amen. Every time I hear that song, I, it does something to me because it did something for me. It wasn't the song. It was who the song was about. Jesus. The matchless lamb. The savior of the world. Our joy, even in sorrows, our peace in the midst of a storm, <laughs> our way <laughs> out of no way, the slain lamb of God crucified raised from the dead sitting now on the right hand side of Father God interceding praying for you and me one day he will return, not as the lamb that was slain, but as a victorious lion of Judah, <clears throat> where there'll be no more, no more, no more discussion about who's the greatest. No more this party, that party. No more discussion about what colors reigns supreme. For the Lion of Judah who will return and judge for the final time this world they that reject him, casting death, the grave, hell, and all unbelievers into their final eternal resting place. The lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. But this morning, no one has to go to that place. Jesus came that we would have life and have it abundantly. He still is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No one comes unto the Father unless he comes by Jesus, the matchless powerful, profound, son of God. You be blessed today if nothing else is said to your liking. Get that because it's at the cross, at the cross where we first receive our sight. We have a unique situation today, resurrection morning and first Sunday where we hallelujah the name of the Lord as we eat at his table. Get your minds right. I'm gonna preach today. I'm gonna preach from a subject that is so important. Talking about no, there are a vacancy at the sepulcher. And when we think about Luke, the 24th chapter, I want to grab verse 2 and 3, because verse 2 and 3 kind of, kind of gives me a backdrop of uh, where we need to pool our thoughts. I want to exegete uh, those nine verses, but I want to catch 2 and 3, where, again, I resound King James, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. 
And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Father, you have your way with us today. We are excited to be in your presence. Speak, O oh God, for we hear you. Lay down your word. Guide our thoughts. Have thine own way. In the name of Jesus, the risen Savior, Christ. Amen. Amen. And amen. Today, a vacancy at the sepulcher. We greet our preachers and our officers and we greet our members and our friends. We greet you in the joy of the Lord. Yeah, a vacancy at the sepulcher. Very familiar story that's not just a story. Thank God that it happened. You and I probably have been uh, in the limelightness of vacationing where we went to places and maybe didn't make a reservation just thinking that we'd just show up and got there and found out there was no vacancy. We had to end up roaming all over the place, Googling here and, and trying to map certain places to see who had a vacancy. It reminds me of the time when Jesus was first dispatched down to the earth as the son of God in the Bethlehem manger. Y'all remember that he was laid and there was no room in the end for him. There was no vacancy when he came to give his life a ransom to complete the finished work that God had given him to do. There was no room in the end. People were scatterbatting all over the place and had no time. Folks had been following him uh, for such a, so many days following the star that God had erected for them to find him. And they came and they worshiped him. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they left rejoicing, having seen the promised gift. The promised gift in Jesus Christ. And yet, when he was dispatched in the Bethlehem manger, there was no room. There was no vacancy. And then we fast forward. 2,000 plus years ahead, an old, on an old rugged cross, that same Jesus that came, he hung and he died. And the scripture is very clear that he rose the third day morning. But the Bible is also clear that Thanks be to God that there are vacancies in the graveyard. Sepulcher, graveyard, synonymous, death, burial place. And I don't know where you are today. I don't know. Maybe you are like those women that came to that place, and when they got there, they came to anoint a dead body. They came with no expectancy but to perfume and fragrance the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. They forgot about what he said. Let's not be so hard on them. We too, at points in our lives, forget about what he said. Well, aren't you glad this morning that the subject preached the message already? Aren't you glad that out of all those tombs, his Sepulchre, his grave burial place, which was borrowed, was empty. When I think about that, as I consider this familiar account in scriptures, it was touched me by my, in my emotions because it reveals something to me that sometimes when we look at life, we we tend to take things for granted. 
this was not, no doubt, a very difficult time for those who had embraced Jesus as the Christ. Yes, he says that he come to give life, but now they see him. He's taken off the cross and he's dead. Their hopes were shattered as Jesus died upon the cross and his lifeless body was placed in a tomb. So our text today deals, reveals the journey of Mary Magdalene and the other women who accompanied her to the sepulcher. Their journey, they, that faithful morning, reveals the journey of all believers as we move about and, and as we come to know the personage of Jesus Christ and accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. As we look at this passage, these verses that are before us, I want to examine the phrase of this journey. There are many phrases within it, and I need to examine it in the, the flashlight of the Holy Spirit to reveal to us about a vacancy at the sepulcher. Let me push fast forward for a moment and say to you that no one could arise from the grave, even those that died believing that the Savior would be Jesus and that he would come. The scripture says very clearly that when he came, he was the first of the resurrected ones. No graves could be opened until his grave was opened. The stone had been rolled away. And that lets me know that there were many vacancies there because of the vacancy of that of our Lord. The scripture says that when he arose, those who died believing that he would come, he raised them, sent their souls <laughs> to heaven. And that's a, that's a word, a statement right there when we think about our loved ones who have died. You know, it's amazing now that Jesus is alive and he's sitting on the right-hand side of God the Father, which lets us know that every born-again believer that falls asleep in the Lord Jesus Christ, their body goes back to the grave, but their soul goes to heaven. Thanks be to God. First Thessalonians tells us that the dead in Christ will rise one day and we that remain will be caught up together where we'll meet him in the air and so ever we will be with him. Mary Magdalene and the other women didn't have that before them. All they could see was a dead Christ and they came not for Amazement, they came to, to anoint his body with fragrances. When I think about this considering a vacancy at the sepulcher, it makes me look at a time of dread it was for those, those sisters. Luke, the 24th chapter, verse 1, you go with me again. He says, now upon the first day of the week, the first day of the week, and very early in the morning, they came, Mary Magdalene and, and the other women came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. There was a crowd going to the gravesite of our Lord, looking to find him dead. And I wonder today, how many of us arose this morning looking for a resurrected Savior? Or did we come looking for a dead Christ? Did we come with no expectancies of him? Did we come putting our faith in something else other than him? Did we arise this morning with no hope in our being, no hope 
in our minds, no peace in our lives. Whenever we look at the word dread, it means hopelessness, no excitement. Only expectation is to anoint a dead body. And verse 2 says, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. It must have blown their mind that when they got there, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. It doesn't make any difference who it was that rolled it away. I personally think that God had control over all of this, and I believe that God allowed his angelic ones to go in and move. No human, no, no necessity from a human being. God would be pleased to do this, and I believe he did. But they came to that grave looking for Jesus, and he was not there. Verse 3 says, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Isn't that amazing today with what we've dealt with in almost a year plus? You think that Jesus is somewhere unaware or maybe he's not. Maybe he was just a myth. Maybe the cross was just was something somebody talked about. It wasn't a real thing. But my brothers and sisters, this morning, I need to let somebody know that wherever and whatever and whatever's going on in your life, our Savior, he's Emmanuel, and he dwells with us. He's never, we're never alone because he's with us. When I think about verse 4, it says, and it came to pass that they were much perplexed thereabout. Don't you be so hard on Mary and them. There are some times we can't hardly see our way clear. Sometimes we can't trace him. Sometimes we can't feel him. Sometimes we can't even, we can't even think about him. But no matter what the case is, he was there all the time, just waiting patiently. Well, well the Bible says they were perplexed, meaning they were concerned, they were worried. They were, they, were, they were discombobulated in their minds. Some would say they were tore up from the flow up in their emotions. Where have they taken our Savior? And that happens when we don't remember what he has said. Listen, brothers and sisters, we are 2,000 plus years ahead now. Fast forward. Are there times in our own lives where sometimes we think that God is unaware of what's going on with us. Sometimes we feel so alone because we've been tre treason towards us by others, and we've been traded by others, and we've been dissed by others, and we've been unfriend by others, and we think that we don't have a friend. My mother used to sing a song, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. He's sticking closer than a brother. He's a bright and morning star. He is a heavy load sharer. And you know what? He's a burden bearer. He's always with us. In fact, when Jesus got ready to board the cloud that God sent him, he says, listen, I send you another comforter. And when Jesus got to heaven, the Holy Spirit came. Now, he dwells in those that are believers. But Mary Magdalene and the other women was faced with dread. You and I today, we are faced with dread. Shots in the arms, mask on our face, social distances six feet apart, staying away from crowds, yet the dreadfulness of the future predicament looms large over us. What's going to happen? When is going to happen? When will we get back to normalcy? Normalcy will never be again. In fact, God brought us to this point so that we could have a new normal where he is the author and the finisher of our faith, where he is with us when we can't understand, where God is always standing with us, fighting our battles and controlling our enemies. That's the new normal, that he's the finisher and author, and he's the director of your souls. When I think about that, Sunday morning had arrived for these women 
The woman, women are making their way to the tomb, bringing with them spices to anoint the body of Jesus. They ain't bringing some hand-me-down. They're bringing the best of the best. That's great. They come to him. Listen, they, they come to him. That's what we ought to do. Come to him. If you don't know him, come to him. If you can't understand life, come to him. If you've been tottered and teetered out, come to him. But when they came to him, like many of us, they had low expectation. They were not expecting life. They were headed to the cemetery to provide a proper burial. There was nothing joyful or jubilant about their journey. That morning, even as of the time that they saw the stone rolled away, my brothers and sisters, our lives were filled with pain. Even now, despair, some of us now in doubt, leaving no hope of assurance for the future. Can I get a witness? Like these women, we wonder where life would lead and how we would endure. Death seems to be the expectant and the final end. But I'm so glad that Jesus not only lifted me, but he lifts us all so that we can have hope in him. Our eternal salvation is not a dreadful one. It is an expected one. But they came because they were looking for a dead body. Anybody woke up this morning looking for a dead Jesus? Come on, he's not dead. How in the world can you phantom in your mind that he's dead when the birds outside of your window are still chirping? The ants are flowing. The skies are moving. The clouds in the air are everywhere. The sun shining. The moon shines. The stars are twinkling. How in the world can you think that he's dead, that you, he touched this morning? And gave your life. How can you think he's dead? Listen, don't put him in a box. He's everywhere and he's alive forevermore. He who knew no sin took our sin, nailed them to the cross, died, but rose the third day morning. And even in heaven, he's praying for us, got us on his mind, always taking the time to pray for us. But it also was a time of discovery for them. Yes, it was a time of dread, but also a time of discovery. What well, do you mean, Pastor? Verse 5 and 6 shows us. Notice verse 5. And as they were afraid, there it is. God didn't give us that kind of a spirit. But don't get bad on them because us, we all at times in our lives. One doctor visit can bring about fear. Yeah. One Clocking in, and before the day is over with, they give you a pink slip, can cause fright. When your livelihood has been encroached and you can't see your way, can't pay your bills because your money is funny and your change is strange. Don't get so bad on these saints of God of past because all of us are sometimes forced with fright. But remember, that is not the God that we serve. He does not give us the spirit of fear, but power and love he brings in our heart, knowing that whatever happens, can nothing happen unless he allows it. And if he allows it, it's for a greater good. Joseph can call, can come back and say to you that I didn't understand it, but uh, yes. You meant it for my bad, but God meant it for my good. Job sitting there with potash, pulling the skin off his body, and he says, not to the enemy, he says to the Father, though you slay me, yet will I trust you, because they knew something. That woman down in Zarephath, taking her last little morsels that she had, to finish up and eat it and die. But somehow God sent the man of God alongside. Can I tell you, that's in the Bible. That happened. But what about you and I? Have there been moments in our lives that we thought we weren't going to make it? 
But there's something about the presence of God. It's a time that we discover that God is greater than greater when we're in the throes of pains, doubt, trials, disappointments, failures, rejection, hurt, that we discover something about him, that he is sweeter as the days go by. And as they were afraid, verse 5 says, and, and they bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Don't get caught up on them angelic beings. One writer says, one, all we need to let you know is that God got messenger, but sometimes, and in the, even in this man, God will show up himself. And he says, why are you, why are you? Look at verse, look at verse 5, the latter part. Why? Seek ye the living among the dead. Who told them they were looking for Jesus? You can't tell God nothing. He knows everything. I need to step out here. Whatever you're getting ready to go through, whatever you're in, know that God already knows it. And because he knows it, he's made a way for it. Yes, he has. God did. God, listen, God ain't sitting back need to be informed about what's going on in your life and mine. He already knows, and aren't you glad this morning that you can't give God no, no preclude of what's happening? God will tell you that, listen, whatever you're going through, don't give up on me. Don't quit on me. Know that I am God, and try me for yourself. Got to be more than your mother's God. Your father's God. He's got to be more than your, your, your sister, your brother's God. Got to be more than your grandparents' God. You got to know him for yourself. I remember I used to hear mom and them singing. Daddy song in the choir. And heard them singing and shouting about Jesus. But it meant nothing to me. I was sitting there playing in the pews. Oh, but God met me one day on my road of Damascus. And changed my life. And I have, I haven't been the same since then. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I wasn't fit to live, could not die. But God rose in my life and made a difference. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that we can discover some freshness in you. He's not, verse five, 6 says, he's not. Look at that. Look at the text. He is not here. Well, where is he? No. But is risen. He is not here. He's risen. He not only told the apostles, he talked to the followers. Listen, he told them the same story. In three days, I'm going to get up out that grave. But somehow, dread. And the fact of not wanting to discover something new about him will make you oblivious to his word. He is not here, but is risen. Remember, there it is. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. That's something about these angelic beings, which I tend to think of theophany. I think it's the presence of God knows everything and he knew what they were going through i got to tell somebody let me just stop this morning for a moment and let you know that people may not know what you're going through you may not even know what you're going through but don't you ever doubt god he knows and not only does he know he knows what you can handle and that you cannot handle he wants you to turn it over to him and god will take some of the smoke out of the fire and some of the heat out of the fire come here hebrew boys god will take the eat the hunger out of a line go ahead daniel can i I get a witness. God will make your enemies your footstool. God knows and he cares. And as the woman made their way to the sepulcher, they encountered two men in shining garments, angels, knowing their despair and dread. The angels questioned why they were seeking one who lived among the dead. Would you preach that for a minute, Reverend? The only reason God will allow his son to come to dead folks so that he can make them alive. You, you don't see Jesus hanging around the graveyard. And I don't mean to be insensitive here. 
And many folks are going and putting flowers on the graves today, and so I'm starting yesterday, and that's fine. But, but that, that, that's, that's not where your loved one truly is. That's the house they used to live in there. Don't spend time in the graveyard if you're not working in the graveyard. Spend time looking to the hills. Spend time setting your affections on things above. Spend time waiting for the return of the Lord. Spend time admiring him, adoring him, hugging him, loving on him. Because we that are saved don't have to worry about the grave. Oh, death. Where is your victory? Grave, where is your sting? The sting of death, that means no hope. But God took the stinger <laughs> out of death, grave, and hell. What a time when we get to heaven, we'll be able to not only slap five. I don't want to slap Jesus five. I want to hug him for discovering something. I never would have known that he would do it. Until I got in a situation, one of our members said he's going to sing this song. Never would have made it. Well, you'll never know you're going to make it until you get in a situation when you can't make it. Yeah, you'll never know that God will be a, a soft place until you get a rocky place. You'll never know that God is a wheel until you get real less. You'll never know that he's a great company keeper until all your company done gone. You'll never know that he's Jehovah Jireh until you get into a need. Have a witness in this house. They, uh, it was a time of discovery. But not only that, and let me move Herbert. I know you got to get your eggs and your ducks and your pigs together. But it was a time of deliverance. A time of dread a time of discovery, but also a time of deliverance. That, that's where you all just come on lock in. You all lock, lock in all of it. Been in, been in, been in. When I look at verse 6 and 8, may I exegete 6, 7, and 8? Thank you. He is not here. They're not chiding them. They, these angelic beings, they, they are not beating them. They are not mocking them. They are not castigating them. They are not dishing them. But they're trying to get them to remember what he said. Lord have mercy. That's the battle. If we could get our children to remember what we taught them when they get outside, they won't get in the troubles that they get in. Can I get somebody? You remember, if you just could remember every now and again, when I was at Bama State, I used to always hear my mom and dad say, you ain't been raised like that. They weren't there. They were still in Birmingham. But I remember what they said. Many times I'm almost to dive off the deep end of life, pools, and follies. But I would hear the voices. Can I tell you, let's go beyond that. Hear the voice of the Lord. Whatever you are experiencing. Don't distrust. Remember what he said. Be concerned, but don't worry. When I look at that verse, that verse tells us in verse 6, he is not here, but is risen. Remember, here it is. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying in verse 7, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again? If you, if you and I are going to be delivered, the Lord has to be delivered into our situation. <laughs> now, if, we, if we're going to have salvation, if we're going to be able to, to sing praise to God Almighty, aren't you glad that the Lord delivered him into our situation. Sinful men, catastrophic events, bad things, world out of control. But Jesus came not to destroy, but he came to give life. When I look at verse 8, it says, And they remembered his word. 
Yeah, we can only see Jesus in riding in Benzes and Mercedes and, uh, and and Cadillacs and all that. No, no, no. We can only see him in the, in the niceties of life. But can I tell you, he is the God on the mountain, but he's still the God in your valleys. Yeah, you might be watering in your valleyness today, but I got to tell you that God came down and wretched, that's an old country word, wretched way down to touch an old stained sinner as me who was sinking deep in sin, sinking to rise no more. And they remembered. Can I get somebody today to remember what he has said? Your situation ain't final. It's not futile. But God can bring fruit out of it. Will you say that again, preacher? Because that was profound. And ain't nobody shout. They missed that shout cue. God, listen, things that are going in your life is not final. It's not futile. But God can make fruit come out of it. The doctor visit is not final. And it's not futile, but God can give a better witness out of you because of what he allowed you to go through. Sometimes God will put you in the hall of fames of trouble so that he can let you know trouble don't last always. And you'll learn how to praise God when you don't have. And you'll have no problem praising him when you got stuff. I always say it don't cost nothing when you, when you are blessed beyond, got all kind of creature comfort thing, got money in your pocket. You know what, your bills are paid for, got a roof that you can lay under, got a bed you can lay in, a soft pillow you can place your head on. Folks acting right. You listen, community folks, everybody acting right. It's easy to give God glory and clap hands for God. It's another thing when you are down at the tender part of the pole. And it seems like there's no hope. It was a time for us to realize the importance of God. When I think about John, the 11th chapter, verse 25, it said, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. You ain't shouting. When we talk about a time of deliverance, I am the resurrection. I can get you up because I got up. And the life, and he that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That's what I like about being saved. Died, but not that spiritual separation no more. Romans, the sixth chapter, verse five, y'all with me? Notice what it says. Paul says, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. No more me in this house. No, no more eyes in this house. But for me to live is Christ, for me to die is gain. Finalist, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 17, says it like this. Paul's still speaking. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any man, any woman, any child, be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. Your hands ain't going to look new. Your feet not going to look new either. You ain't going to grow no more hair. But you're a new creature in Christ. The text concludes and says, old things are passed away. Yeah. Behold, all things are become new. New, I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't cuss as much as I used to cuss. I don't hang out where I used to hang out. I don't get down like I used to get down. Since I met Jesus, I can have a party all by myself. Me and Jesus. Have you ever been riding along in your car? And just your music going, you bumping and you ain't bumping B.B. Bobby Blue Bland and Muddy Waters and all them folks and David and all that. No, no. Jesus is a way maker. Oh, how pleasant is his name. Just a little talk with Jesus. Oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Let us come before him with praises. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And when I think about that, 
All believers can rejoice in the spiritual resurrection that comes through a relationship with Christ. And we are delivered from sin and death in him. In Christ, we are delivered. But then finally, and then I close this message on this resurrection morning. Look at the time of declaration. It ought to be a time of declaration. A time to declare. Listen, when you have when you have experienced a time of dread and know that he is not there, he he was true to his word, the dreadfulness of life attitude moves away. Yeah, the doctor said it's bad, but you got to remember what Jesus, the greater doctor, said. Sometimes doctors can be a, a little bit up on themselves. It reminds me of an illustration that I want to give to you that might make a little sense. Some might, some might get it, and I do the skinny version of it. This preacher, he was going to the hospital to visit one of his members, and when he got there, he got in the elevator, and there was a couple of people on there, one distinguishing-looking person other than himself, it seemed to be a doctor, and uh, there was an old lady that was there, and so um, she was looking at the distinguished doctor, and she kept on looking at him in the elevator. We were, he said they were riding up in it, and she asked him a question. She said, uh, who are you? And he looked at her with that kind of prideful look. Uh, he said, uh, uh, I'm the one that they call when the others can't do what they need to do. I'm the, I'm the head physician. She looked at the preacher, and she looked at him, and he was kind of humbled in his spirit. And she said, well, who are you? He says, I'm the one that they call when he can't do what he needs to do. Ain't that a blessing, y'all, that there's only one Savior? He's in the world today. Listen, your bank account can't do it. Listen, folks in the government positions can't do it. Nobody can do me like Jesus. And when I think about that de declaration, somebody ought to be shouting this morning. When I look at the text, the text tells us that in verse, verse 8, says, and they remembered his word, and because they remembered his word, verse 9, and returned from the sepulcher. Went there, tore up from the floor, went there depressed, went there, didn't find a dead Jesus. And the Bible said they returned and told all the things. There it is. And told all the things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Bulletin. Press forward. Maybe you need to pause. Whatever. God has brought you through. You ought to be the very first person to say, we're not for God on my side. The car flipped over 12 times. The seatbelt still on me, but it wasn't the seatbelt that protected me. It was God Almighty. Didn't ever dime to my name, but somehow God made a way. Sick and I couldn't get well. But I called on the name of the Lord Jesus and got an answer. Don't you let no rocks cry out for you. You ought to be the best. You ought to have a story. You may not have but one, but you ought to have a story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And my brothers and sisters, when I think about it, it would have been impossible for the women to have remained silent about their encounter. They had been at the sepulcher that morning filled with dread, filled with dismay, filled with doubt, but they left renewed, renewed in their hope of assurance for the future. Jesus was alive. Can we press forward and to thousand plus years ago we looked back into the past and saw a Bethlehem manger 
where there was no vacancies, no room for the Savior. And at 12 years of age, he went to a temple and he took that five books that Paul the Pentateuch, the book of the law, and he read it and they sat back and said, we never seen it like this before because they didn't have an experience with the Savior. The Savior read his own words with power, with zinc, with zeal and vitality. And then one Thursday night, after having been with his disciples. The Bible says, instituting what we call now today the Lord's Supper, speaking to them about the things of the future that will come. And the scripture says, he said to them, this is my body that I will give for you. This juice that we're about to, fruit of the vine, to partake of, it is a New Testament representative that brings about the greater, the new covenant, that what can wash away our sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. There he was in the garden of Gethsemane agonizing in his prayer, praying so profusely, Father, this cup is bitter. Remove it from me. Nevertheless, not my will. Let thine will be done the solemn moment, the serious event. Judas, who sat at that table earlier, come with a band of men to arrest our Savior, who made no room in their own ends, their hearts. Jesus approached him, kissed him, and they took him and led him to the judgment hall. They hired professional liars. They beat him all night Thursday. Thursday night, they disrobed him. They spat in his face. They hit him, put blindfold on him, and they jostled him around. They took a plaited crown of thorns. And the Bible says they pressed it down onto his skull. And they twisted it. The blood started to flow. And he didn't say a mumbling word. Friday morning, bloody, beaten, battered, belittled. But he marched. He marched through Jerusalem streets, up Calvary's Avenue, on top of Mount Calvary. The cross was on his shoulder, beaten, bloodied, battered, but he kept on. They jeered at him, this troublemaker. He kept on marching points and stations of his travel, his journey of Mount Calvary. He fell, but he was lifted. Got on top of Mount Calvary. They took his hands and nailed them to that wooded cross. That tree that 
never ever anyone touched. That tree that was planted by Almighty God, that tree that God purposely, positionally planted, that our Savior will be hung. And they nailed his hands and nailed his feet. Please don't leave this broadcast. Please understand that they lifted him high. There he was stretched out wide. Please don't forget that. Dropped him low. Gambled for his garments. Wagged their fingers in his face. The Bible says stuck their tongues out and the very ones that he had healed. And they said all manner of things falsely against him. The thief on the left had hung with him, says, if you be the son of God, if you who you say you are, still in a prideful way, hanging out there because he had committed crimes that was worthy of his punishment, death. If you be the son of God, come down, save yourself and me. Save us too. The thief on the right, in my own vernacular, hush up, man. We're guilty. We're robbers. We're thieves. We're backbiters. We're liars. We're cheaters. But this man in the middle, Loved us so much. This man, and he shut up talking to that thief on the left. And he said, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Jesus put death on a standby, paused it, and said to the man on the right, this day, you shall be with me in paradise. And the scripture says he gave up the ghost, dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder and died. Kicked the back door of the grave in and went down and led captives free. Right early Sunday morning, up from the grave he rose with power, all power, heaven and earth in his hands. And the scripture says, at the 40th day of his resurrection, he went back and sat on the right hand side of Father God. And today, don't you ever forget it. Pandemic in or out or non-existence. Money coming, whatever the case is, health plummeting. Don't ever forget the story that ends at the grave. It was declared there are vacancies because of the vacancy that his grave was empty. And I'm glad to announce to you today Thanks be to God for a vacancy at the sepulcher. No more dread. Please discover anew that with God all things are possible. A time of deliverance, the deliverer has come to deliver you and I. A time not to be quiet, but a time to declare. As we think about that, we're entering into the same service as we prepare in our hearts. We got your sacraments, the bread that represents Jesus' body. I'm going to come down and I'm going to ask our members who are here today and our members and our friends that are on the airways that if you never made Jesus your choice, if you've just been going through the motion, he'll save you today. That's what this is all about. That's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. Those Easter renditions all punted towards Jesus. 
He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the savior of the world. He's the light of the world. He's a bridge over our sinful waters. Jesus. I want to invite you, if you don't know him, come to know him. All you need to do is say, Lord Jesus, I'm just like that thief on the right. I'm guilty of all my sins. I made a mistake, and I'm sorry. When you get into your kingdom, remember me. And just like he told that thief on the right, he says, today you'll be with me in paradise. If you ever made him your choice, but somehow the dread of life, the problems in life, sometimes the forgetfulness of what God has done for you, you've forgotten that you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, fire, baptized, on your way to heaven, not someone to a holding place, got a mansion in glory, and it's yours, and it's mine, and it's ours, because of he who said in the 14th chapter, let not your heart be troubled. I want you to come, and those of you who are prepared, come before the Lord. I want to pray a few moments here and pray for forgiveness of sin, pray for God's blessings upon our time together, which he has awesomely blessed us. I'm talking about that, know that there are vacancies That's because of his vacant grave. He didn't need it, but just for a couple of three days, he borrowed it because he wasn't going to be there alone. We don't know when our time will come, but the grave will not be our resting final resting place. Because he leaves, all fears are gone. And I want to invite you to pray with me today and as we submit ourselves afresh to him and renew the covenant that he's already given us and to come before him with no other ulterior motives but to surrender. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today, God. Thank you for the restructuring of our views, our minds. Thank you for the rehearsing of your word. For it is a light unto our dark path, a lamp unto our feet. We thank you, God, that it'll never grow old. It, it, the grass withers but the, and the flower fades, but your word will last forever. Thank you for a resurrection morning, not an emotional event, but a factual event that gives us right relationship with you. So now as we come, those that accept you, Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord, that you receive them. Those that know you but have walked away from your God, let them know you are right there and you're available and you will restore. Now, Father, as we come, we're your children. We are not without fault. We are not without sin. Father, breathe upon us right now and reveal those hidden sins that we may not be privileged of, that we may be able to confess it. We don't want to come before you in an unworthy state. You said that many have come and they are coming away and men are even sick. Even many are dead. But Lord, we want to come, and we can't come in our own merit and our own strength. We come on the finished work of your son, Jesus Christ. He declared us righteous. We stand on his promises. Thank you for him being our savior, our mediator. Now, Lord, we ask your blessings upon these symbols as we approach to receive them. We ask your blessings upon the bread and upon the fruit of the vine. And as we receive them all, Lord, we pray, God, that you would send us into a mean world, shielded by your love, directed by your word. We ask it all in Jesus' name. We pray. Shout together with me, amen. Say amen again one more time. Amen.
in 1 Corinthians, uh, the 11th chapter, verse 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us all eat together. After the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The scripture says, Let us all harmoniously and brotherly love drink together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself, and let, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. And the Bible says, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this call, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that, he should not, that we should not be condemned with the world. Whence for my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that they come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. All praise be to God. Aren't you glad this morning that there was at least a vacancy at the sepulcher? And as a result of that, our lives have been spared, and our future does not look bleak, but it looks bright. And as we go out into the highways and hedges, compelling men, women, and children to come to know him, when we do that, tell your story. That's the declaration of the last part of my sermon was to declare what he has done in your own life. God bless your hearts real good. Patrice Pruitt is going to come and give us some announcement. Let's be governed by that and as we listen to what she has to say. the Lord seated on the throne exalted if you prayed the sinner's prayer we welcome you to the body of Christ it is important that you connect to a bible-based Christ-centered church and if that connection is here at the Grove we welcome you to our church family contact us immediately following this broadcast at 205-786-3351 or send us a message through this Facebook page so that we can gather some information from you. Thank you for supporting this ministry and this platform to deliver God's word each Sunday. Continue to freely make your contributions by Cash App, PayPal, 
mail, or our drop-off service. Spend time with God daily. This week, we are reading 2 Samuel 12 through 1 Kings 7 for our Bible reading marathon. There's no time like the present to start. Our health and wellness ministry keeps us aware of health concerns and issues that are recognized each month throughout the year. This week is National Public Health Week and World Health Day is Wednesday, April 7th. April is also Minority Health and Health Disparities, Stress, and Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Do not neglect your mental, physical, and spiritual health. COVID-19 vaccinations are available throughout the state. The following locations are available locally. American Family Care, Cahaba Medical Care, Cathedral of the Cross, Parker High School, Hoover Met Complex, Legion Field, UAB Highlands Parking Deck, Walgreens, Walmart, and others. Register online. If you do not have access to the internet, Legion Field and Parker High School do not require appointments. As you prepare the table for dinner today, Hide the eggs for the children to find, enjoying your family and perhaps your friends. Here is what we want you to remember. Wear your mask, social distance, and wash your hands often and thoroughly for 20 seconds with warm water and soap. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Have a blessed week and stay safe. Amen. All of those announcements we need to pay attention, but certainly uh, to the latter. Uh, I finished my last um, shot. I took the Pfizer shot and uh, finished the last one uh, last Wednesday. And the only thing that it did for me, um, it made my arm a little sore. Uh, the first shot uh, kind of hit a wall. I, I don't take naps, but when I, about three hours later, I had to take a nap. Uh, but this one just kind of like so on, and that was it. And just because we done that, somebody says, well, I can't tell you what to do. I can't, you grown, you do what you want to do. But let me say this to you, that if our church is going to get back uh, into a full service where we come in, we need to go on and, and those who are able and have mess, made up in your mind to get it done, Get that shot, that'll, that'll help us out a little bit more. And not only for our church, but just for society, period. I'm not, I'm not one of those, I don't get any money from telling you to go get your shot. I just wanna see you around here. I don't want nobody to leave prematurely. And so God really has protected us and there have been countless of folks who have lost their lives uh, because of this COVID-19. Uh, uh, but why would you uh, do what? Uh, process that God has allowed uh, mankind to come up with uh, to help us out. So be mindful. Now the, uh, the governor is going to, on the 9th, she's going to lift the, um, the mask ordinance. But let me tell you one thing. Yeah, this I'm going to tell you. Put your mask on. Don't be hanging out. Some folks you'll need to be hanging out with anyway. Uh, but then don't, don't get foolish. And just because you got the shots in the arm, don't make you, don't cause you to let your guard down. Uh, we don't know, we don't know about this COVID thing, but we do know that it's deadly. And so we don't want to tempt God. One guy was telling me, he says, I believe that the Lord loved me so much that I go and stand out on I-59, 20. And I can just plead the blood of Jesus. I said to him, you will be pleading the blood. And if you're saved, you're going home before your time. Don't tempt God. He's not a God that can be tempted, nor will he tempt anybody. So I want you to be concerned. Now, when you go today, tell somebody about it. It ain't about the bunny. It's not about the eggs. It's not about the candy. It's not about the little dinner that we may eat. Share that story. Time is winding up. We need to get that story out to those who are unsaved. 
Are we our brother's keepers? Yes, we are. I want to thank our members here always. Thank you all for your faithfulness. This resurrection morning has been awesome, flawless. Uh, the enemy tried to get in, but he couldn't. And so we thank God for that. I want to thank the folks working in media, high five, two times, three times, four times. I want to thank our awesome music ministry, Jocelyn and her, and her gang and those folks that are always singing them songs and friends that come on. Listen, we do not take you for granted. This thing goes together not by one, two individuals. All of us are involved with that. And my high fives out to your elbow pumps and uh, what we call uh, uh, hugless or hugs. Yeah, but thank you for what you do. We want to thank our, our other ministry. We got administrative ministry for counting that money, keeping it going on. I want to thank y'all for doing what you're doing. Our secretary, they still doing their stuff. Birthday, I have five. Amen. And God bless your heart. Our, our security guard with his daddy with him, keeping us safe and all that. This God is blessing us. And thank God for Abigail and that. Catrice gets up and do those things. And what about the other folks that are working behind the scenes? Yeah, there's a lot of folk that are still doing what they were doing when we were coming in person. We're going to take time and give them five. Bless your heart. And you know what? We show sure enough more to thank our members. You know who you are. You know you got them stimulus checks and you didn't hoard it all. You blessed the Lord through your church. You know who you are. High five to you. And you've been blessing this church. You've been doing it from March of last year like you were doing before the pandemic came. Thank you. And thank you for your consistency and commitment. Now, you know what? That's a group of people at the Grove that makes up the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. But not everybody doing what you need to do. And you know who you are, too. But, you know, it's still time to get on board. Just because we're not up belly aching about money doesn't mean that we don't need resources. We need resources to carry out. But I want to thank our membership for doing what you do. God is really blessing us. Our new friends who have come on, and I do want us to remember them. And uh, they are some of them out of towners and they are not with us, but they are uh, in the physical. But you know, they own these broadcasts, uh, things that we do. Thank God for you uh, and bless you. And, and uh, as we think about this, I want you to be praying for Sharice. Y'all know Sharice. She's the one that she adorns so many looks. She's uh, battling cancer, but she won't let cancer battle her to the, to the grave. She is still pushing on. This coming Tuesday, we need to be praying for her now. She's going to have a surgery, and uh, it's going to have a couple of three days of uh, hospitalization. And uh, we're going to pray that uh, God will keep her, keep her, and it's already a success. We know that already. Do want you to be, uh, do want you to be praying. I want you to, to really pray for her, and then I want you to put my wife, throw my wife in there, because my wife is having to do a procedure, uh, kind of a couple of times, I think maybe about 21 times or something like that. Uh, she's doing better. My wife is a, is a giant of a person. Uh, she don't ask for nothing, and, but she's always giving and all that, you know. But, you know, she's going through a little rugged spot there, but she's uh, coming back up. I want you to be praying for her. And, uh, and do pray for your pastor because anything that goes down with, with past wife affects me. You know, and, you know she, she, she's, the, she's the rock, you know. I, I look like I got it going on, but... Uh, Every time you look at me, her, her fingerprints are all over me, and I ain't talking about it in no bad way. Uh, you know, she, she's really works. She really prays for her pastor, and she does that. She crazy, but y'all, she mine. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm at the duck when I go in this time, Andrew. Uh, thank God. Y'all don't see my other son, Trey. He works, he, he works all Him and Andrew work tangibly together. They are the nuts and bolts of the uh, media ministry, along with Rayshard and uh, we just thank God for, for people behind the scene. You know, when I get to call names, we get messed up. I want to thank everybody. And uh, our bus driver don't do a lot of bus driving, but you know what? He's still, in the, he's still in the vein. We know one thing, that our living is not in vain because it's in the Lord. Amen. And we want to thank the cultural arts ministry. woo our little kids. I didn't see nobody with pieces of paper. It looked like they memorized all that, and they were, they were just talking like they need to talk. That's just something about them. All of them are so precious and wish there could have been some more, but we know how it is. But we always, God keeps a remnant, and thank y'all real good. And mothers and fathers, y'all, make sure y'all treat them children real good. Let them find a bunch of eggs, uh, not them, uh, give them some real eggs. Amen. 
You ready to go? I know you are. Has this been a wonderful day for you? It's been a great one for me. Is it Resurrection Sunday? No, it's resurrection all the time. Every moment we get up, we get up because he got up. So let's spread that word as we leave this place. Let's receive the benediction as we pray. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for what you're doing. We pray now in advance for uh, the healing hands upon uh, Sharice. And uh, we know that there are others that are, are going through. But we pray now for them. Lord, we lift up them. And we pray now for my wife. We ask God that you would uh, continue to give her that, uh, that kind spirit that she displays and that, and that faithfulness that she always displays, God. Uh, we thank you for what you do, Lord. We ask your blessings upon uh, individuals and those who are working in ministry here. We pray now for our membership at large that taking that whatever they have and bringing it so that the church continue to do business. Thank you, God, and bless them mightily. And Lord, we don't, we're not selfish. We know that there are others that are going through our sister churches. They are not may may not be as in better shape as we are, but they are they are our sister churches. And Father, we ask your blessings upon them. Now, Lord, as we go into this world, let us tell the dying world that there is a vacant grave because you have risen. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, and now forevermore. Let's sing together. Amen. Amen. Sing. Ha, 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 ha. He's risen. Man. Bless you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed this week and be a blessing.